In this tutorial, we're going to look at the inversion of time lapse resistivity data. So, we have a sequence of resistivity surveys. We're going to treat one of them as a reference survey, and then we're going to invert the subsequent surveys but penalize any departure in the resistivity model from the reference survey. To do this we can use a number of techniques. In this case we're going to apply the difference inversion as described in chapter 5. The data set we're going to work with is illustrated in one of the case studies in chapter 6 and shown in figure 6.11. Um, this is a survey looking at water uptake by winter wheat crop. So surveys were carried out between April and July. Uh, the surveys involved DC resistivity measurements on 96 electrode arrays and each electrode was spaced 0.3 meters apart. So we're only looking at a shallow depth uh, in the in the area because we're interested in water soil water changes in the top meter of the soil profile i.e. the zone where the crop is extracting water so we have a reference data set which in this case is the 23rd of april 2013 and then we have four subsequent data sets and we're going to invert those four subsequent data sets relative to that reference data set of April. To do this, we select 2D inverse and time lapse survey, and that allows us to import multiple data sets. So we select this and then highlight all the files we want to import, the first one being the reference data set. These are loaded and we can view the pseudo section of each of the surveys. But we're going to define the electrode geometry and we have 96 electrodes. We're going to read the electrode geometry from a CSV file. And we can then look at the pseudo sections and we can apply filtering as before and we can apply that to each of them or to individual data. Um, and we can plot individual data sets here to illustrate the, the change in the pseudo sections over the survey period. We'll go to mesh and try and create a triangular mesh. Notice that in this case, it's actually created a very thin mesh, i.e. only down to about 0.6 meters. I'm going to specify that I want the mesh to to go down, the fine region to go down to 1 meter. So I put the fine coarse boundary depth at 1 meter. And I'm going to change the growth factor, reduce it slightly, so that I've got a relatively fine mesh in the top meter. And I might be able to show that a little bit better by exaggerating the scale here what we can see in this top meter we've got a very fine mesh and then the mesh gets coarser after that I go to inversion settings I'm going to use an a weight of an offset error of 0.01 ohms and a relative error of 2% and then I go to inversion select invert what happens is the first survey file which is from the 23rd of April is first read and the inversion is carried out for this survey so this will run through as before in the normal case so our initial misfit is 31 but we can see that even in the first iteration, the misfit is drop, has dropped down significantly. And this will probably take one or two iterations before it actually reaches the target misfit of one. And we'll be able to see 
the profile of this convergence in this top plot where we see in the the blue dot marks the initial RMS and then we see that on the second the start of the second iteration the RMS is dropped down to um, a value pretty close to one so this first survey has converged now the next data set which is from 14th of June is read in using the starting model from the previous inversion and also conditioned on the previous inversion so that the inversion tries not tries to make sure that it doesn't depart from the results of the of the reference data set of the uh, of the reference inversion and we can see this second inversion profile uh, um, convergence profile shown with the orange dot here and that is going to drop down probably in in two iterations there it goes notice that the initial misfit on the second data set is much smaller than the first one because it's actually got a it's using the the first inversion as the starting point now we move on to the third data set and the process continues and this will run through until all five data sets have been processed
and so now we've got convergence of all five data sets the second third fourth and fifth have been inverted as time-lapse data sets i.e. Uh, penalized uh, to the uh, reference data set and we can view as before the resistivity um, we can change the color scale here and I can go through and look at each data set and I can fix the scale if I want to do that what I'm going to do here is also look at the difference so this is a percentage change in resistivity from in this case the 14th of June to the reference data set which is the 23rd of April if I plot this on a I'll use a common scale minus 100 to 100 I'm going to switch off this sensitivity overlay so I can see here that the the red zones the warmer colors are indicating a a drying or we infer a drying from an increase in resistivity and if I go through the further data sets in the series I can see a progression of that over time and um, we interpret this in this particular study as the zone of water uptake by different crops and so we're seeing an effect of different drying zones under different crops and the zone in the middle here is an area is a fallow zone an area where there are no crops and if you look at figure 6.11 and the associated text you'll see more information about this particular study